The buzz of a tiny aerator is the only lifeline for these small creatures, soon to return home. And this mussel species, the Alabama lamp mussel, used to occur throughout the uh, whole Tennessee River system. And it is one of the most endangered species of mussel in North America. The 400 Alabama lamp mussels to be positioned in the river include some that have been waiting patiently. Here's our mussel cages. In special cages uh, designed to allow them to grow the safely and acclimate to the river water. They're just a half bowl of concrete with a hole in the middle where we place our mussels. Mere inches in size, they began life in an Alabama laboratory. All still alive a new generation of mussels returning to the Elk River. Hopefully if this population gets established here, it'll reintroduce it to someplace where it historically was. TWRA biologist David Sims is with Todd Fobian and Thomas Tarpley of the Alabama Wildlife and Freshwater Fisheries Division as they approach some nearby shoals where the mussels will be placed. If successful, David knows today's effort will impact generations to come. You see little ones and you think, well, they don't do that much, but there's also some out there that are huge, cleaning up to 50 gallons of, of water a day, the larger ones. And if you've got, say, just one million of them out there, that's 50 million gallons of water every day that's being cleaned and processed. The temperature in the cooler right now is warmer than the temperature in the stream. We're just kind of making the temperatures more even. <laughs> so it'll be less of a shock to the animal. Separating the animals into thirds, each man takes his fair share of mussels and begins the careful work of individually placing each one into the rocky bottom. I want to put them in this short piece here at the bottom. Anterior in. Anterior in. That's where their little foot comes out. So you put them in like this. Otherwise, if you put them in upside down, they suffocate. We just put them down into the substrate, my soft spot. It's like planting seeds. The hope is that each mussel will attach itself to a rock nearby to keep from washing downstream. The animals released today will probably be able to reproduce in a year or two. So being able to start seeing actual juveniles produced from these animals that are released will be the bread and butter, the most exciting part of the process. To most of us, mussels are out of sight, out of mind. Yet every day, we are affected by the good work they do. These things are biological indicators. A lot of people call them canaries in the coal mine. So basically, if something is going on with your water quality and you're seeing a decline in your mussels, it's usually reflective on that water quality in general. By today's standards, the Elk River once teemed with many species of mussels. So the work done by these three men might be termed just one step, but a big one, to return this habitat to what it once was. It's exciting to bring these animals back to a site that used to probably have 50 species of mussels, if not more than that. And now I think there's around 17 or 18. So being able to reintroduce one of these is great news and a good sign that your water quality is improving and that things are stable. These small creatures might have a more certain future, made safer by the combined work of experts from neighboring states who are restoring what nature once provided. Being in cooperation is just a wonderful thing to see. That's what it takes to bring some of our river systems back from the damage they've had in the past. I'm Ken Tucker on Tennessee's Wild Side.